Shalom. I'm Neil and this is my wife, Jamie. Shalom. Welcome to our Fort Lauderdale home to Jewish Jewels and welcome to our series on the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Last week we learned that there is no J sound in Hebrew, so the Lord who provides would not be Jehovah Jireh, but would be Yehovah Yireh. Yeremiah, Jeremiah, that's how he said in Hebrew, and of course, Yonah, Jonah, Jonah mm -hmm. which we learned means dove. Now, let's enumerate the other letters we've covered so far in this series. Aleph. Aleph. Bet. Say, say it with us. Let's start okay. again. Aleph. Aleph. Bet. Bet. Gimel. Gimel. Dalet. Dalet. Hey. Hey. Vav. Vav. Zion. Zion. Chet. Chet. Tet. Tet. Yud. Yud. And today is letter number 11. Ken. What'd you say? Ken. Well, actually, I could say Yofi, and then I'm going to say Ken. Yofi's from last week, wonderful, but I said Ken. If you're ever in Israel and they ask you if you'd like a bottle of water, oh, always say water Ken. Too. Yes. <laughs> You can never drink enough water. The word ken, which means yes in Hebrew, begins with our letter of the week. Let's join our Hebrew professor, Dr. Donnie Ben-Gigi, as he introduces this week's letter and its fascinating word picture. Welcome back, Dr. Ben-Gigi. Thank you. Today's program is about the 11th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is? The letter kaf. And why do I do that? Because this, the meaning of kaf is the palm of the hand. Hmm. And if you look at it sideways, this is exactly the shape of the letter kaf. And it means? It means the palm of the hand, right. And give us a Hebrew word that uses the kaf and, and how it fits together. Okay, many examples. Let's take one that is biblical, you know, to tie it up to the Bible, connect it to the Bible. Speaking in Genesis about Abraham, who is very heavy, and this is from Genesis 13, 2. Speaking about, it says, the Avraham kaved Meod bemikne obazahav. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, silver, and gold. So, well, kaved is rich? You would assume that kaved means rich, mm -hmm. but really kaved in Hebrew means heavy. So mm -hmm. here is the first time we connect between weight and richness. His weight is heavy in gold and in silver, heavy. And that makes, makes the translation, the translators say, he is rich. They will not say the word heavy. Right. But kaved has to do with weight. Kaf, bet, and the letter dalit makes it heavy. But look how the word heavy in gold and how human we are even since the ancient time of history. Well, he's heavy in, in gold and silver and in cattle. But what's the word that is the derivative from the word kaved? Kavod, right. honor, dignity. Glory? Glory. Usually even, it's translated yes, glory. yes, even glory. Mm -hmm. How unglorious is to think <laughs> that we reach we reach a lot of rich, a lot of glory and a lot of honor because we are heavy in gold, in cattle, or in mm -hmm. silver. But apparently this is intrinsic to the Hebrew language. We can't change it. Personally, I cannot comment on that, but kaved, heavy, and kavod are related. Honor and dignity had to do apparently with being heavy or rich in gold, in silver, and in cattle. Very okay. interesting. Have, have you got another word for us, another Hebrew? Many, many. Let's, <laughs> let's take one. There is a beautiful scenery in northern Israel. If you ever visited, of course you did, or you took people with you. I'm sure you took them to the Sea of Galilee. Yes. This is what it's called in English, Sea of Galilee. That is describing where it is located. But for Hebraic, for Hebrew people, we don't need to know where it is. It's like telling you, well, I'm not going to give you any example. Sea of Galilee is called in Hebrew Kinneret. Mm -hmm. Kinneret starts with the letter ta Kav, and it is coming from the word Kinor, which means a harp or a violin. And if you look at the shape of the Sea of Galilee, right. yeah. it does look like a harp. Yes. So it's called Kinneret after the shape of the Kinor. Since we talk about the kinor, I can't help but mentioning to you the most amazing kinors that are mentioned in the Bible, in several, several references in the Bible. The Bible speaks about two kinors. One is the kinor, well, we know it's the kinor of King David, right? Kinor yes. David. But the Bible speaks about the kinor asor. This is the kinor, this is the harp of asor, which means ten, ten strings. strings. Right. Mm -hmm. 
And another kinor, even more amazing, relates to your Wait program. A Wait a minute. A harp of ten strings? Yes. Kinor starts with a kuf? Kaf? Kaf, yes. Kaf? Oh. Ten strings? Yes. Is yes. that what you're Yes, kinor? that's oh. what I'm saying. Ten strings. And another one, even more related to your program, is the other kinor that the Bible speak about, speaks about. And this is, listen to this. It's a kinor. It's a harp with 22 strings. Oh. 22. Two harps in the Bible oh. with clear description. 22. The Aleph Bet. The Aleph Bet. It the Aleph Bet. <laughs> which makes music. Are we hinting here that there is music in the Bible, in the words themselves? Oh. Apparently, yes. So if you look at the kinor, but you know, try to take, give any musician, many of your musicians, right? Take a 10 string harp and try to play on it. How can you do that? It does not go with a do re mi. That's a scale mm -hmm. of seven. What about the 22? There is still an extra one. If you go seven, 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 mm -hmm. it still won't work. Apparently, there, there, are, there is a persistent belief from the, since the ancient time that there was a musical cue, a musical opening, or, or what do you call that? Score. Score that is not known to us today that they use in the Bible. Look at the book of Psalms. The entire book of Psalms is filled with musical cues. And it says the musical instruments right. in the beginning. But how did they play on the 10-string harp and in the 22-string harp with what we know today with the do re mi? doesn't work. Something here is missing. And when they left the land, what did they do? Did they take it with themselves to Babylonia? No. They were taking the kinor, the 10-string right. harp, a, a, and they and were hanging it on the willow, on the willow trees. Remembering Zion. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then there was a couple in Israel. They went and recreated of the harp of King David, recreated mm -hmm. it by the biblical description, and now it became famous. They are everywhere in yes. America. Yeah. You go to this We've famous picture. Yeah. This is the harp that did Shoshana yeah. and Micha. Harari yes. made in, in uh, I think you introduced yes. me to them, yes. right? Yeah. And we spoke and we did a project together. And I think many people are blessed with them. We wrote them 100 Psalms, uh, Psalms which are direct speech of a person to the Lord. When you're asking, you know the whole book of Psalms, out of the book of Psalms are excerpts. Mm -hmm. And we sent it to them and said, take that harp, the first replica of King David's harp and that you've done. Them. And go to the wall in Jerusalem, the place, the dwelling place of, the, of God. Um, Shekhinah glory. It, right. The Shekhinah glory. And get inspired and write music for those 100 harps. And they've done that. This is, harp, this is Psalms of the Heart. But Danny, is there a connection with the Kaftan and Kippur? Like of course. In Yom Kippur? Of course. I knew it. Well, you knew it and you're right. Kaf. The symbol is like the a hand, hand, but it means every time, the letter kaf is a prefix in Hebrew. So every time it appears before a word, it will mean as or like, okay? okay. So you said kippur. Kippur is the word beyond, beyond kippur is the word kapara. And that means the atonement. Mm -hmm. We'll talk later on in some of your other programs, if I will be honored to do that, about the kapara. Well, the, the Greek for the kapara is the holocaustus. This is a desired, the desire that God wants and is willingly taking sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But the word kapara yeah. in Hebrew, and this is really not scientific, but looking at the word ka is as or like, and para is a calf. Mm -hmm. And this is what we'd use for sacrifice. We have full description in Leviticus how they use the calf and what parts to use on the calf right. for the sacrifice. And what is the atonement? Is that a higher level of sacrificing. When we atone to God, there is one day in the year we, we ask for forgiveness for the sins, and that's Yom Kippur. Right. And we are either for pardoned or judged. This is the day of judgment, right? But the word kapara, ka is as or like, and para means is a, it, it means so a calf. Like a calf, like a sacrifice. So the atonement, the request of God, is taken perhaps as a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Kapara and Kippur. It could be, again, I'm, I want to state here, it's not scientific, right. but there are so many things here in Hebrew that break the law of coincidence to be coincidental. And, and really what I hear you saying is that when we have prayers of true repentance, it's as if we offered a sacrifice. Ex exactly. Taken, well, you said as if, 
And that's the kaf. That's the letter kaf means as or like. And it, that's the word. It, it, it's yeah. a part of the word kapara or kippur. The word kippur, not to be mistaken, the kaf means as or like in that word. Right. Thank you, Denny. Like a sacrifice, but not exactly what God requires. Listen, Leviticus 17, verse 11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for your soul. Not the mitzvot, not the good deeds, not the repentance, not anything that we do. It is the blood that makes atonement for our souls. It's kind of like this kippah. I can put it on my head and it will cover my head, but it doesn't take my head away. It was the blood sacrifice that took the sins away. Listen from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For he made him, Yeshua, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He became sin. What awesome love that Yeshua took on our sin. He literally became sin. And because of that, we have a, a verse, a promise in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 that says, for all the promises of God in him, meaning in Yeshua, are ken ve'amen. Ah, yes, yes and, and amen. amen. Yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. I love that, ken ve'amen. It's so exciting to learn Hebrew, but you have to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. And that's why we prepared this Hebrew Jewels alphabet card, Aleph Bet card for you, if you will. It has the Aleph Bet, it has the vowels, has some Hebrew prayers, and it also has some of the Hebrew word pictures. You can download a copy free from our website at jewishjewels.org. Simply select the Resources drop-down menu and then choose the Aleph Bet card. The Aleph Bet card will teach you how to pronounce each Hebrew letter and vowel and will also teach you a few basic Hebrew blessings. Remember, that's jewishjewels.org, then resources, and select Aleph Bet. Listen to this word picture, Neil, for the word ken, yes. It's spelled kaf nun. So to say yes is to open your hand to life or activity. Now the word kohen, which mm -hmm. is the word for priest, and if your last name is Cohen, this, you know about that, is spelled kaf Hey nun. By placing the letter hey in the middle or in the heart of the word for yes, the word picture which is formed tells us that the job of a priest, of a kohen, is to reveal the heart of the yes. Wow. Yeshua, our high priest, reveals the heart of our Father God who says yes to us through his Son. Not no, God is saying yes to us today. The entire gospel is spelled out in the Hebrew word for priest. And of course, Yeshua is our high priest. And he says, Ken, Ken, Ken. That's what he's saying right. to us today. Yes. And he brings us to our heavenly father. And earthly fathers say yes to their sons on the special occasion of their boy's bar mitzvah. Let's go to the Kotel, a good cough word which stands for the Western Wall. Let's go there now. Here's a bar mitzvah boy and his family dancing as they approach the Kotel. These Jews of Sephardic descent are wearing their traditional Middle Eastern garb and playing the traditional horns, drums, and accordions. Notice how the boobies or grandmothers join in. This is a simcha, a joyous occasion involving the entire family. A number of bar mitzvahs are already in progress at the hotel. This boy has put on his phylacteries of tefillin for the very first time. Here's an example of a beautifully decorated Torah case from the Sephardic tradition, which began in Spain and extended throughout the Middle East. This Torah cover is from the European or Ashkenazi tradition. This young man is publicly reading from the Torah for the very first time, surrounded by a large group of male friends and family. The women are looking over the partition that separates them from the men. As you can see, there are many bar mitzvah boys at the hotel today. At the conclusion of the Torah reading, the men begin to chant and the women throw candy, which is symbolic of the sweetness of the Word of God. Prayers are continually being placed into the crevices of the Kotel. A Kodak moment at the conclusion of the service. Now it's time to return the Torah to its resting place beneath the Kotel. The 
hotel is like no other place in the world. And here's a painting by our good friend Shoshana Silver, who made Aliyah many years ago, of a young man praying for the peace of Yerushalayim at the Kotel. It's literally the western wall, the only part that remains of the temple that Herod built on the same site that Solomon had built a temple. Listen to the promise that God made when Solomon's temple was dedicated. This is from 1 Kings chapter 9. And the Lord said to Solomon, I have heard your prayer and your supplication that you've made before me. I have consecrated this house which you have built to put my name there forever. And my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. And even though the, the building was destroyed and, and so much of, of even the stones around it were destroyed, this one wall remains. And so Jewish people throughout the centuries have, have gone there to try to pray. I remember the very first time that I visited the Kotel. It was our first trip to Israel and it was evening and I came up, it was fairly deserted. And I remember coming up to the wall and placing my hand upon it and beginning to pray. And I just had such, such a sense of the presence of God and, and I felt God speak into my spirit and say, I can go anywhere in the world but one place. And I wondered, and again I felt God speak into my spirit and say, I can't go into the heart of a man unless I'm invited. God's promised that his eyes and his heart would still be there forever. They still are. And we go today still to pray at that place. Yes. Really, God is saying Ken to us, yes. but he's waiting for us to say Ken to him. Mm. We have to say yes to Yeshua. We have to invite him in. He doesn't force himself. The Ruach HaKodesh is indeed a gentleman. A gentle dove. So, yeah. so God leaves it up to us. He, he came to save and to deliver. But it's just like the, the leper who came to Yeshua in Matthew chapter mm. 8. He said to him, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. He wanted to be cleansed. And what was Yeshua's answer? Did he say, no, you're too dirty. I'm not going to touch you. You're unclean. You'll make me unclean. He said, I'm willing. He said, Ken, 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 yes, yes, yes. I want to heal you. I want to touch you. There's no one too dirty. There's no one too sinful that Yeshua doesn't say yes to. You know, Jimmy, that's one of the most amazing stories, really, because it really shows the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, or the covenant with Moses and Israel, and the covenant that Yeshua has opened to whosoever will. Let me give you this example. The leper. If under the Old Covenant, Yeshua had touched the leper to make him clean, Yeshua would have become unclean. But in this Brit Hadashah, this new covenant that God had promised to the house of Israel, the house of Judah, in this new covenant, Yeshua reaches out, touches the unclean one, and he's made clean. Amazing. Now, for some additional prophetic insight into Kaf and Yeshua, let's visit our friend Elaine Caruso, who graciously shared her Hebrew letter banners with us. Elaine, this Kaf banner is absolutely magnificent. Tell us about this letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Okay, this is the 11th letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and it represents the crowning achievement of God. Jewish sources say that the Torah, the Sabbath, and Israel are the crowning achievement of Hashem. But they also say that a good name is the highest crowning achievement a person could have. So what we actually have here is the name Yahshua, on the four corners of the earth, and that's in reference to Isaiah 45, where Hashem says, Look unto me, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Mm -hmm. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, in the Lord God is righteousness. All who are incensed against him shall be ashamed. And in the Brit Hadashah, the new covenant, we see the same thought expressed by Hashem, where Philippians 2.9, it says, who being in the form of a servant, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, made in the likeness of man. Mm -hmm. And he became obedient, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, Hashem has given him the name that is above every name, that unto him every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Yeshua is Adonai to the glory of God the Father. He is Melech Yisrael the King of Israel. Yes, he is. And of course, this is a beautiful crown with jewels, but we know there was another crown. There was that crown of thorns. That's true. Because he paid the penalty for our sin. That's it was the right. Kippura. He came to his own, and his own did not recognize him. But to as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the B'nai Elohim, 
the sons of the living God. Here we have the 12 tribal stones uh, that represents the 12 tribes of Israel. We know that one day they shall nationally crown Yeshua, mm -hmm. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And this is on every Jewish prayer shawl, this crown here. It looks exactly like that. And down here we have a Hanukkah, and we have on both sides, right in the left, we have 12 leaves and 12 olives, and that represents his government. And so just as his government in the Brit, in the Tanakh, was the house of Israel, in the Brit Hadashah is the commonwealth, the remnant of Israel, and those nations that come under Israel's covenants and receive Yeshua the Messiah. And God has given Yeshua a name that is above all names. It is his crown, his... Keter, which is another good cuff word. Yeshua is our Kohen Hagadol, our high priest. When he died on the cross, he made atonement, kapara, for us. He became the eternal Yom Kippur sacrifice. What a gift. The gift becomes even more amazing when you begin to learn it about it in Hebrew. And that's why we've prepared this Hebrew jewels card for you with the Hebrew alphabet and the Hebrew vowels, some Hebrew prayers, and some Hebrew word pictures. We'd like to send it to you as a free gift. You can download a copy free from our website at jewishjewels.org. Simply select the Resources drop-down menu and then choose the Aleph Bet card. The Aleph Bet card will teach you how to pronounce each Hebrew letter and vowel and will also teach you a few basic Hebrew blessings. Remember, that's jewishjewels.org, then Resources, and select Aleph Bet. Neil, here's another powerful word picture. The Hebrew word kafar means to forgive or to atone for. It is spelled kaf Pay Reish. Its word picture tells us that forgiveness comes when you cover the mouth of the man instead of pronouncing judgment. And you know what that reminds me of? In John chapter 8, the Pharisees and scribes brought to him a woman caught in adultery. When they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what do you say? And they said this to him that he might be tested. And they continued asking him. He raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin, let him be the first to cast a stone. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, began to leave one by one. When Yeshua saw that there was no one there, he looked at the woman and he said, Woman, where are your accusers? Has no one condemned you? And she said, No one, Lord. And he said to her, Neither do I. Go and sin no more. And maybe you've been in that kind of situation. Maybe it hasn't been physical adultery, sexual adultery, but maybe you've been caught in spiritual adultery. You know, that's idol worship. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mean little stone statues. I mean maybe your children, maybe your job. Maybe, maybe something about your job is more important to you than what God has asked you to do. And you've, you've had this conviction, you've had this feeling inside of you, something to do with your job. Maybe it's to not work on Shabbat. Maybe it's to change jobs. Maybe it's to not sell those magazines or to not dispense that kind of prescription. I don't know. But that too, that too can be adultery, spiritual adultery. And of course there's emotional adultery as well, isn't there, Jamie? Yeah. But God forgives it all. The heart of the Father says yes, but one thing, God is a God of great love. He is also a holy God, and He can't tolerate sin. And that's what separates us, no matter what the sin is. If you've committed adultery, if you've committed murder, if you've stolen, if you lied, all of us have sinned. I've sinned. For all have sinned, the Bible says, and fallen short of the glory of God. But through Yeshua, we have that forgiveness because He is God's yes. He says to you, Ken, Ken, we are men today. All the promises. So now it's your turn to say yes to Yeshua. Open your heart to Him. Say, yes, I do believe, Yeshua, that you are the Mashiach, Melech HaMlachim, the King of Kings, the Son of the Living God. Yes, I do believe that you died for my sin. Ken, I do believe that God raised you from the dead. Ken, I do receive you as my personal Messiah, as my Savior. Ken, I do want to follow you always. Ken, I do believe that all the promises are Ken the Amen, that to me, now that I believe, Ken, 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 Ken Yeshua. Yes, Yeshua, I receive you. Teach me about your love. Help me to follow your word. Ken. You are my shepherd, my love. 